Hello, and today we're going to talk about the MakerPi P3 Pro, which is live on Kickstarter. Let's examine the printer, let's see how good it is. So, as I said, we're going to talk about the MakerPi P3 Pro. This is a new IDEX, um, it's from a company called MakerPi. Uh, MakerPi are an established 3D printer company, but they do a lot uh, in the domestic market in China, and they are branching more out into, into the US and the European markets, and this is their big splash, it's a new design, new heavy lift printer, not, not some of the other machines that they do. Even though they do a lot of other machines domestically, this is their first real major um, step forward into the uh, an introduction of the company into the US market and it, even though they already sell some st items here so let's talk a little bit about the printer um, we'll talk about uh, I'll show you some prints and um, we'll talk about the electronics and the, the technology in the printer and let's see how it goes it's an ILEX machine means independent dual extruders two extruders on the x-axis it has linear rails on the x-axis it's got dual Z motors with dual end stops for the Z for the Z axis so the Z axis can actually come down and level itself because each side has its own stepper it has um, optical end stops on the Z optical end stops on the Y and an optical end stop on each of the X axis because each of these had their own optical end stop both X axis have filament runout sensors which is great um, what else does it have it has where am I? Okay, it has a magnetic bill plate. The magnetic bill plate uh, is a magnetic bill tack surface, so it is a flexible surface. Um, now, I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of the flexible surface, but it's a flexible surface and it's magnetic, so it's easy to, to switch in and out. Uh, the you have the option with this to exchange that with a flexible steel bed with PEI if you wish to. So you ha just look for it on the on their on their Kickstarter page. Now a lot of people say these are really big and so on, and you know th they are, but the weight of the motor sits over the linear rail on the x-axis. So they actually the weight is sitting over the rail. It's not going to interfere with anything. It doesn't. And if it was if the weight was on the front, if stepper motor was here in front, you'd have the weight sagging forward on the printhead. You do not have that in this case. Everything stays upright, it stays well aligned. I've never had an issue with it. Uh, so what makes this different to every other printer out there? Well, there's a few additions. Um, before we get into electronics, I want to talk about their additions. So first of all, it comes with dual, actually I have one the heads off. It's come with dual max and um, not standard print heads, which are uh, 250 degrees. So uh, I would say probably around 240, 245 normally, because they are PTFE lined. So it comes with two of these normally on the printer. And that's your standard kit. And I believe that's the $4.99 price. Or is it $3.99? I think it's $3.99. And then you have, um, as well as that though, if you go with the higher end kit, or if you pick and choose which other options you want with it, you can also add additional functionality to this printer. So instead of having normal extruders, a lot of people say, but I want to print this, I want to print that, I want to print nylon, and I want to print ABS, or I want to print polycarbonate. That means you have to modify the printer. But in this case, you don't. The reason why is you have the option of getting this with an all-metal hot end, hardened steel, 300 degree um, hot end as well. So you can actually add one of these to extruder number two and switch out extruder two with this. And now you can print high temp materials on that printer up to 300 degrees. So your polycarbonates, no problem. Your PC uh, with carbon fiber, no problem, because it's a hardened steel nozzle. Your flexible, your not your flexibles, your um, uh, abrasive materials like wood filament, you can use this because it's a hardened steel nozzle. And the hardened steel is what you need to print abrasive materials. Same for phosphorescent or glow in the dark materials or other um, like, uh, materials that have glitter in them. They can be abrasive. The hardened steel solves all that problem all by just switching out a print head. And it's only four bolts in the back. You put have four bolts in the back, take the print head off, put the cable onto this one, plug in your filament runout sensor that's mounted to the cable, and you're done. And you now can do high temp higher temperature materials. But wait, there's more. 
It can do that. It can do high temp. It can also do... Is this the right one? No. It's this one. You can also exchange extruder number one with one with dual extruders built in. That can actually do uh, mixing and blending of materials. So you can actually have a mixing head. It does have a mixing head in here. So you can actually print and blend two colors of PLA or two colors of PETG or whatever in this while printing without and without having to do any other playing around or without having to um, build a design or design your own mixing head hot end. You have that option with this printer. Now, I will say one thing. In the electronics, and I'll cover this, this one area, normally a single extruder has a step of controlling it. In this case, because of this setup, they have a second stepper controller that when you select the mixing head, there is a daughter board in here where this cable plugs in. There's a little daughter board in here with a stepper chip on it. So when you're doing the dual extruder, the, the mixing head like this, the second stepper is activated. And now you control both steppers independent. Both steppers are controlled out of the one cable. Now, somebody, some people have said, so why can't I get a, a second one of these mounted over here? Well, there's no daughter board on, on extruder 2, so you cannot run a second mixing head on extruder 2. It's not possible. But you could do a mixing head and, and, um, and so on. You can mix them up like, like that, but you cannot put a second mixing head on it. it. It does not have the hardware to do that. So, but there's more. As well as doing all of that, where is it? This is my, there's a flexible, oh sorry, I have it on here. Forgot. So you know, I, I've done some TPU printing on this as well. Um, it does also has a print head that is designed for flexible materials, which has a dual gear extruder built in here to turn around and handle, specifically designed to handle flexible materials. So, and again, four bolts, take it and put to take one head off, put on your flexible material one, four bolts on and you're done. And you can print flexibles. Now, in this setup that I have here, I have PLA and I have TPU. I don't have a sample with me because I actually printed this to fix something in the house. But I um, did my supports with PLA. I did my uh, my part I printed in TPU, and you just break off the PLA the PLA supports, and they come off really easy from TPU, and you're done. I was part of a towel rack that needed to be repaired, and it had rubber ends, and I had to re reprint a new rubber end for it. That's something that broke in the house, so I had to set up. Now, and it has more. Now, one other thing it has is a half a watt laser. Now, you're thinking half a watt laser is not great. A half a watt laser is enough to do engraving. And I can show you a quick example. Where did I put that? There we go. You can do stuff like this with a half a watt laser. You can engrave plywood and stuff like that. You can engrave cardboard. If with enough passes, you could probably you can cut paper. Um, you can cut cardboard if you want to um, with a half watt laser. Obviously, you take off. You, you put something over the bed to protect the bed, but you can actually do engraving. Now, I will say one thing: when you're doing a lot of people who are you, um, there is a plugin for Inkscape for um, for lasers, but that is not the plugin you need. There's a there's a let me get the name right. There's a JTEC plugin. The JTEC plugin because a normal laser runs on Gerbil, right? GRBL. And Gerbil commands are slightly different. The G code commands in Gerbil are slightly different than Marlin. And so some of them are the same, some of them are different. And because what you're doing is when you put a laser on this machine, you're basically using the PWM ports for the for a part cooling fan, which can vary. That's why it's a PWM. And which stands for a pulse with modulation. And the because you're using PWM ports. You need you need to use a command to, to, to exchange the fan speed, the fan command, with the Gerbil, the normal Gerbil command created by Inkscape. So there's a there's a plugin called JTEC, that's a plugin for Inkscape, and um, that JTEC plugin allows you to put the M106, which is the fan control um, uh, command, and you put an M106 S and a number and 255 is between 0 and 255 so you set a 255 for full for full power and then you do m106 s0 to shut it off you enter that into the little plugin and then when you generate the g code it automatically switches those out for you you can also set your z offset height 
um, for when it starts to burn. Uh, this is normally at 25 millimeters, but if you're putting in taller material, you do the focus of the laser, which is 25 millimeters, plus the height of your material, so let's say 20 millimeters. So you set in the, the plug-in to 45 millimeters, and the gantry will actually move up to 45 millimeters before it starts engraving. So you remember, if you're going to do that, you have to use that, um, that little plug-in. The other option is to go in and manually search and replace the, those commands um, from the normal um, Gerbil commands to the M106 in uh, for Marlin, and you have to do it manually with a text editor, and that's not the right way to do it. It's best to use that little plugin. I will do a separate video on how to use that plugin. It's very easy, but I'll show you how to get, where to get the plugin, how to install it. It's easy enough to set up, and once you do that, you can actually use the laser on this machine as well. So it's quite simple to do. So let's talk. So we talked about all of the option head, all the option heads that are here. It is very flexible about what it can do. So it's not just a dual extruder. It's a dual extruder. It's a mixing head. It is a high temperature head. It is a flexible material print head, and it is a laser and it's regular print, um, IDEX machine all in one go, which is fantastic, everything in one package. Now, let's talk about electronics. The electronics in this machine is custom built. They designed the boards themselves. It is 32-bit electronics with 2209 steppers, so it runs quiet. It does have a mean well power supply, standard. No having to switch stuff out, no having to buy a, a special version of anything. It comes with the mean well power supply built in. It um, all the electronics in this in this machine are correctly terminated. You do not need to get out your furl kit when it arrives at your door before you power it up, like you do with other ma manufacturers. It comes properly terminated. Fantastic. So good electronics. Well, and um, the um, everything's properly terminated. You don't have to worry about all that kind of stuff. Uh, it no micro SD cards. Hallelujah. No micro SD cards. It comes with a USB stick. You use it, and it's a Scandisk USB stick. Scandisk Cruiser Blade is what it's using. So it comes with a USB stick. It's only a 16 gig USB, but that's still pretty large. Some printers come with 4 gig micro SD cards. Waste of time. 16 gig USB stick. The USB stick has instructions. It has sample parts in there. It has the, um, the guides and everything that you need is on here. And MakerPy are actually doing more videos on step-by-step -step and how to do stuff with the printer as well. So there's a lot more coming out of them before they go into full production. There's a lot of um, videos that I, I've suggested to them. Now, what is the downside? Um, when I first got the machine, their auto bed leveling was horrendously slow. I mean, the, if you, the print heads were moving like this just for auto bed leveling. It was woefully slow. So I reached out to them and they said, look, ABL is really slow. It takes five minutes just to do an ABL. And they said, well, we set it slow on purpose because it's our first iteration of the machine. And when we get more and more feedback, we can actually change the speeds. So about a few weeks later, they sent me an updated firmware. I flashed the machine with the updated firmware, night and day performance. Um, there was, there was a buzzer option on it that I couldn't turn off. Every time you turned on the, the warnings and all the beeps, you were always on. Now I can actually save them and turn them off with the firmware update as well. I also asked them, um, there's a few things still missing, and they will. They said they are implementing it, so they haven't done it yet, but it's, it's, it's work in progress. So they are actively working on improving this machine. They are actively looking for input on the machine. Um, so I asked about, um, there's no baby stepping. And I said, you need baby stepping. I explained, I showed them a video of what baby stepping was all like. I, I went to, and they understood, but I still wanted to make sure there was no miscommunication. And I went about, about, AB, about the baby stepping and they said, yes, we will do it. We will add it to the firmware. I even gave some suggestions about how, how to do it and where, but they are actively doing it in, in the, to make those changes on the machine. So firmware still needs some work. They know about it. They are working on it actively. So I don't have any worries about that. Um, some people have complained, and like some of the some people out there that I've heard of, um, have said that these cables that they're using here for to connect the hot ends are big and clunky. Yes, they are, but a lot of people want to replace them with ribbons. No, no, no. Here's the reason why. 
I have many printers here. You don't see them over here. There's a whole row. There's rows of printers over here. Um, some have ribbons. Actually, a, few, a good few of them have ribbons. Ribbons look really pretty. They do. I, I'm not going to. I'm not telling you that they're nice. They're pretty. They're tidy. They fail. Ribbons are notoriously troublesome. They are. They are a consumable on a printer. If you have a printer with a, with a ribbon on it, expect to change it at least once a year, maybe more depending how often you use that printer. The reason why is ribbons use really thin layers of, of, of metal in the ribbon, because it's a ribbon, right? And it's actually a solid piece of metal. It's actually not braided or twisted uh, uh, copper or uh, aluminum cabling. And because of that, as the ribbon moves and bends, it work hardens and they break. And they're notoriously for breaking and they always break right in the middle of a print. Right? I've had a couple of printers ha happen to me in the last 12 months. I have other printers that use heavier cabling like this that are here two years and I've never had an issue with them. Not once. So, given the option, personally, and this is my opinion, you can choose yours if you say, oh, I want ribbons, I want ribbons, that's fine. My personal opinion for someone who has a lot of printers and who have put the, who have put the printers through the ringer, and I mean really pushed my machines. I've had machines going 24 hours a day, seven days a week for months, non-stop. And given the option, I'll choose a cable like this any day of the week because I know it won't break on me. It's fixed, it moves, it's strong, it's got braided metal in, in there. The, the wires are actually is braided. It is are stranded. They're not single core, so solid core wires. Solid core wires will break. So I have so much... Um, I really like the stronger cable, personally, and a lot of people will complain, you know what, that is your opinion, my opinion for someone who uses a lot of machines, I'd rather these, because if I was going to get a printer with a ribbons in future, and I've seen a couple fail, but if, I, um, if I'm going to get a printer with ribbons on it, I will buy extra ribbons, I will always have a stock of them, because if I want a printer with ribbons, I know they're going to fail on me, I will have to get backups. With this, I won't have to worry about it because I know it's going to keep working. I haven't had a fail yet. So, the electronics are good in this machine. Um, I like the setup that they have. Um, it's a very strong, robust machine. I mean, like, this will take a, a, a kick in, right? Um, they've added some niceties that um, other companies may not have had. So, let me show you here. They've added these little loops here that allow you, so your spool hole, your spool will not fall off. Your spool edge sits down into a little groove here, and in that groove, your spool cannot fall off, cannot be pulled off. Um, they also, if you're using materials like, um, let's say, PCCF, which is polycarbon or uh, carbon fiber filled polycarbonate, um, you have you have the option. It comes with the machine by default. Um, a Bowden tube that you can add up here, a PTFE tubing that you can add to go down to your printhead. And the reason why is polycarbonates and other materials like that have a tendency to be, to be springy. And once you release them from the spool at all, they tend to unwind you know, like, a, like a spring. But by passing them from here down through a, bo a, a Bowden tube, the Bowden tubes do nothing but guiding, but down through the Bowden tube, it actually eliminates them springing off the spool. It actually it eradicates that. Um, and I know um, Nerese. Um, experienced exact that issue live on stream and I told him about the putting in the button tube and that solved his problem so it really does make a difference also you can use the button tube just in there as standard generally the, the two spools will never get get um, tangled but if you want to ensure that it uh, just for your own mind's sake you can actually put them in there and run it through the button tube always without any issues what else um, the it has, it does include the failover or backup mode in the IDEX. So in IDEX you have standard print, which is extruder one will print. And if you have two colors, you will do uh, one goes to extruder one, second color will go to extruder two. You print the one, one parks, extruder two comes out, does its printing, extruder two parks, and then print, extru uh, printer, um, printed one, E1 comes out and starts printing. That's normal standard mode. Duplicate mode in IDEX is where you print a copy of whatever's on the left hand side of the bed. Now when you slice you have to put a part on the left hand side of the bed and it will print whatever's on the left hand side but a second extruder will come out and mirror and copy its motion. So 
So that's that's a, a duplicate mode. Then you have the mirror option, where whatever you put on the left hand side of the bed, extruder one will print, and extruder two will print the mirror opposite to it. And it's mirrored on the x axis, right? So it actually will print like this, doing a mirror copy of whatever is being printed on the bed. Some people ask, can I do two separate parts on the print bed? Um, yes and no. And let me explain why. Um, because you're sharing the, uh, the same x axis, and the share, um, even though the extruders are separate, like the hardens are separate, you're still sharing the same axis and the same y and the same z. Um, you cannot do two separate parts at the same time. What you can do is, um, there, but what you, there's another way around it, but it kind of slows on your printing. And the way around it is, you put part one here, you assign it to the extruder one. Part two here, you assign it to the extruder two. When, when it's printing with print head one, it will only print one layer with print head one, and that will come out of the way, and then print head two will come out, and it will print one layer, and that will park, and these will take turns. So this one will only print this piece, and this one will only print this piece. But it does slow down your prints because you're waiting for it to exchange from print head to print head. It adds slight delays to your printing, but you can do it, but that's the only way is to assign the separate print heads. They will not do it side by side, but it will do copies, it will do mirror copies, uh, mirror images, at the exact same time. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. So um, let me show you some of the prints. So first, um, I wanted to test, I did a single um, torture test on the printer. And under my torture test, this is what I got. Came out nice and clean, um, really nice bridging, very clean print. And this is a, this is a, a purple silk. And I, you'll see a bit more of that. I've done a few more things in this purple silk. So it came out really well. So I decided, let's try something different. Let's, and that was a single extruder. Let's try do um, a, a copy mode, like duplicate mode. So in duplicate mode, I did vases. And in duplicate mode, you see the spirals on these vases are turning the exact same direction. So one purple's on one side, gray on the on extruder two. And I printed really well. And that, that came out really nice prints. Excuse the noise, guys. Then I decided to do the duplicate mode, or the mirror mode, which is one, the, the print one will actually, or print two will print a, uh, a mirror copy of extruder one. So if you have a look here, the spirals on these are turning the opposite direction. These were printed at the same time. One after, after just immediately after that, you see the spirals are going the opposite direction. And it came out really nice. So I decided let's do a bit more testing. Um, I like, uh, for Ilex machines or dual, dual extruder machines, I like matter ha the Matter Hacker Fill. Um, if you check, if you check it out, it's a little spaceman with two colors. So with the silver and the gray already on the printer, I got, I set up a Matter Hacker Fill and I assigned, I assigned the gray, which is on extruder two, to, to these areas. And then the main body was purple and it came out really nice. And that was my first real attempt at doing a two-color print, and it came out well. Is it perfect? No, but I got it perfect later on. So this without any real heavy tuning or whatever, it came out really nice. So I decided to take it a little bit, step step it up a little bit. And since um, I, I I wanted to change colors a little bit, so I went with um, a, a silver and a gold on on this. Again, both um, silks, and I did another fill, a larger size fill. They came out nice. And it actually printed really cleanly. Now if you're wondering why I'm looking over here, I have my screen, my, my monitor over here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so it came out really cleanly. I was happy with the results. So I decided to take a little step further and I changed out the colors. And I since, um, I since I had a gold in there, my silver was kind of running low. I changed out the silver for white. And I know white doesn't show up great in camera, but I decided to do another small fill, since I had one already sliced, in silver and gold. And that looked really nice. I'm gonna have, and, and since I'm into astronomy and, and science and stuff in space, i got lots of little, little astronauts that are around my house now. And so I decided to do a larger matter hacker fill in the white and gold, which came out also really, really, really well. I'm really happy with the results of that. Even his, the feet and so on, the... the, the um, the ridges and the feet came out fantastic. The alignment was really good. So I wanted to take it a little bit step further. I want to see 
how well it does with something in, with a slightly larger print. So white and gold were still in the printer. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't change the filament, but it was it was doing well. So I did a white and gold, and I did an Iron Man helmet. Now there is a little issue with these ones on the eyes, and that's to do with the design. The design has only got a single layer of gold here, which is so thin and really hard to print. Um, and with a bit of tuning, I could get it, but I just I just didn't bother. But this is for a little um, pen holder. I don't have a pen there, but a little pen, little holder for my desk. So I've got my Iron Man helmet pen holder. And then I decided to try and change up the colors a little bit more again. And I went over to doing a little, this is another little torture test, which is a yellow and green cone. So it's layer upon layer. It's a good way of testing to make sure your Z heights between these two is set correctly. And it came out really nice. And then I decided to see how it goes with flexies. So I had other small spools of stuff laid around and a little bit of a flexi uh, T-Rex and it came out really well, printed nice and clean, no issues with the flexibles. So I know the, the accuracy is is good. I actually did test my X, Y, Z and, um, and E steps on all of it and it actually worked out really, it came out fine. So I, I didn't have any tuning to do there. Now I like to do a lot of practical parts and I'm in the process of doing a project where I take um, an Ender 3 printer and convert it into a belt printer. So I, I actually put some of the parts on this, the PETG parts on this. So this is a, a practical part made from PETG. Um, this will actually hold um, one of the axes and a, and a belt. A belt will actually fit in here with an idler for my conversion kit. So this is the outcome of the PETG prints and it came out really good. Um, so I don't have any, I, I haven't really found any problems with the machine. It prints fantastically. I haven't, I've not run into any, any major issues. And again, since I was doing vases, I decided, um, and I had some of the orange left over from doing this, I decided to do a larger vase with non-silk. Silks tend to break. Um, so this is a non-silk, uh, and it's a, it's a good, strong vase. Now, I want to show you in comparison, um, hold on one moment. So, part of the reason why I'm going to show you this in pieces, and there's a reason why I'm showing you in pieces. Silks are notoriously bad for layer adhesion, especially when you're in vase mode, and they break. So this got knocked off a table, and something something else hit it, and it broke up. Now this was using the mixing head. Now the print is fine. It's just that silks are notoriously brittle. If you get any silk and you do vase mode, they do this. So this is the reason why this is in pieces because it fell in the ground. But I want to show you the mixing head. When you're using the mixing head, I had a, uh, the, I had the silver and the purple in there. And one side is more purple, more, more, more purple. I can't even speak. One side is more purple and the other side is a more silver, but it blended the colors and it came out, other than the, the layer adhesion, which is just bad because it's a, it's a silk, the color shading between the purple and the silver is beautiful. You can really see the, 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 the variation on it. And, it actually, the, and that was from using the mixing head. So you can get this nice, beautiful shade of colors that are actually give a nice, a nice finish with this print head. And this is the heaviest print head that they have. So if people are worried about quality of prints using big heavy print heads, don't. Now, since it is a flex, since it is, as I said, um, a silk, silks are really bad at flexible at layer adhesion. But with any other material, or if you had more walls, if I did that with three walls, it'd be a good strong art. But with single wall, it's just weak. But the colouring on it and the print quality is just beautiful. So this is more purple. Or purpler, remember I invented a new word. And this is more silver side on this side, and actually it, it blended really nicely together. So, silks. Okay, forget about the silks. All in all, my opinion of this machine. I like how it's built. Um, I like that it's designed to last. Um, they put a lot of thought into it, and they add, from me dealing with them, they seem really, really eager to work with the community to try and make products better. Um, that is a sign of a company you want to work with. You don't want to deal with a company who say, we're big, we know it all, 
we don't care about what your opinion because that happens all too often in the 3D printing community and you end up with printers being shipped. People buy them, but they're lacking in, in a lot of areas. And it's better off, hardware-wise, I haven't found any real issues with this. Um, software, they're working on it and they're listening. So it's going to get better. So I'm not worried, I'm not too worried about that. I actually, um, I've actually communicated with their software engineer, their firmware engineer. So their firmware is in development, it's been improved, they're listening, what more can we ask for, right? They are actively listening to us. But all in all, as a printer, I'm happy with it. Um, I've done lots of printing with it. I've successful printing repeatedly over and over and over again, successful printing. And I haven't found any major flaws to the machine. You, if they do what they're doing with the firmware, it'll be a great machine. Um, I haven't run anything major problems. Now, I, as I said, I will do some short videos about how to do the, the laser offset, that, that, um, that uh, JTEC plugin. I will do a short video about how to use that because I know some other reviewers have used the machine and they run into issues that they go in and edit the G-code manually and you don't have to do that. There is a plugin to fix that and I will show that plugin in operation. I'll do a sh short video on how to use that. But um, other than that, um, it's not a hard machine to use. And with anyone, if any of you do consider doing it, I'll put the link to the kick, uh, Kickstarter in the description. But if any of you are considering it, looking into this, and if you want to ask questions about it, feel free to reach out to me. It's uh, astroprinter at protonmail.com. You can reach me there. And you can also find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook book, which is uh, Astroprinter. My YouTube is Astroprinter. And my Twitch channel is twitch.tv forward slash Astroprinter. And I often do regular hangouts. You can come in and join my hangouts and ask questions as well if you want to. And I'll be active in the groups if people have questions to try and help people get along. I, I cannot comment on the Kickstarter because I'm not a backer. Um, but this is a good machine. I've never, I haven't run into any major issues with it. Uh, I know Renee Reese has been happy with the machine. I know a few others who've gotten the machine are happy with the machine with the outcome. So if, if everybody is, if nobody's saying any real major, don't touch this because of these reasons, that's a good sign, right? So consider it. If you're looking for a larger machine, uh, as I said, the base IDEX is uh, 399. Um, and if you want to get a kit with all of these other print head options and so on, I think it's six hundred dollars but we'll check on the kickstarter the link is below and let me know what you think i hope you found this information in, um, helpful please like su like subscribe to this channel um if you want to and share it go spread it out with all your friends say guys come look at this and they can also subscribe to your channel it'd be nice to, to help the channel and um, my paypal is in the description also if you want to help donate to this channel you can do so through paypal um, you can also come over to Twitch TV if you want and subscribe to my channel on Twitch TV, which also helps me on Twitch and also helps my channel as well. And everything that I earn does go directly back into the channel. I never use a penny f for anything personal. It's all for the channel, such as some of the projects I have planned for later on this year. Everything will go into those projects. So thank you again. I hope you found the information um, helpful. And remember, don't buy it, make it. Take care, everyone.